Happy New Year to Fortopia! 2018 was an interesting year for Nintendo, because although we got Pokemon Let's Go and Super Smash Bros, we didn't get many games from Nintendo themselves. But third parties, ports, and indies reigned supreme on the eShop. What could Nintendo have planned for 2019? Well, I'm your host, the Nostradamus of Nintendo, 24 Kevin here for 24 Kevin Nintendo, and these are my Nintendo predictions for 2019. As is tradition, let's look back at last year's predictions. I think Nintendo Switch should break 24 million units. Nintendo will continue to print the NES Classic and SNES Classic for the rest of the year, while also releasing at least one more mini console. I believe Nintendo will continue to release games for the 3DS through 2018. I'm inclined to believe that the Nintendo IP will be another Donkey Kong Country game. I would have to put my money on a new Luigi's Mansion game. I think the Wonderful 101 was one of the most underrated games for the Wii U, and either a port or a sequel would be greatly appreciated by this guy. Don't think either of them will be released this year, but the earliest I could see that coming would be 2020, maybe late 2019. Detective Pikachu will finally be coming to the West to coincide with the movie's release. Pokemon Go will also add in new features, and Pokemon Crystal will come for the 3DS. I think Nintendo could reveal that a new mainline Animal Crossing will finally be released. I'm gonna add Pikmin 4 to the mix. I would have to put my money on either a Mario Party title or a Mario Sports title. Releasing a Switch Sports Resort, or something along those lines, will be Grand Theft Auto V. I see Bethesda announcing one, maybe two more titles for the Nintendo Switch this year. 13 out of 17, so 75% isn't too bad. Wasn't perfect, but we tried to be a little bolder last year, and we're gonna try and do it again this year. Now a quick caveat, we're gonna try to avoid things that were already rumored, such as Spyro coming to the Nintendo Switch, so I'm going to avoid anything like that. But enough of that, on to the good stuff. Let's first start out with some of Nintendo's most beloved franchises, shall we? First of all, one of Nintendo's franchises that have been somewhat quiet in recent years is Star Fox. Now, we did get Star Fox Zero in 2016 for the Wii U, and Star Fox recently had a cameo in Starlink, so this could support no new games coming for the franchise. But I'm more inclined to believe the opposite. With Star Fox being promoted in the game, it could be viewed as a way to build hype, and with the rumored Star Fox racing game in the works, I would not be surprised to see a new Star Fox game pop up either in the form of a port, or a brand new game, or even a mobile title. Speaking of mobile titles, Nintendo announced that Mario Kart Tour would be coming out this fiscal year, so we should expect to hear something about that in the next few weeks, as it's due out before the end of March. If Nintendo's model for mobile games is to be believed, we should expect to see at least one more mobile game by the end of the year. If it's not the aforementioned Star Fox title, it could potentially be a Zelda mobile title akin to Dragalia Lost or Phantom Hourglass, or something Donkey Kong related that they could make similar to Super Mario Run, but we'll probably use a free-to-play model regardless. Back to Nintendo's mainline games though, as it's the third time in the last four years I'm gonna make this prediction, but it has to be the year of Pikmin 4. I mean, they said the game was done development years ago, so what's the holdup? Originally, I think Pikmin 4 was planned for the Wii U, but Nintendo shifted focus to the Switch later on in development, and with the inclusion of two Joy-Cons, this game could be even more co-op accessible than before. I mean, can you imagine a fully-fledged co-op adventure mode in Pikmin? This could potentially put it on par with Overcooked as one of the best co-op series on the Switch. Another big franchise worth mentioning that's in the same vein is Fire Emblem. After the announcement of Three Houses, we haven't heard much about the game, so I could see us getting more details for this game in the rumored January Direct, with a full-fledged rollout in the Expo in May. Now, at the Expo, I could see them going over more features for Fire Emblem Heroes, but they wouldn't hold an Expo just for that and Three Houses, would they? They really need to go all out here, and I could really see them announcing two more Fire Emblem games here. My gut is telling me they would reveal something for the 3DS to get one last game out of the engine they developed for the system, and that Fire Emblem Warriors 2 is on the way. After the uproar of Ike and Roy not being included in the original Fire Emblem Warriors, one would have to think they wanted to hold off on such iconic characters for a planned sequel so they wouldn't blow their entire roster in one go. 
from almost being fully cancelled around the time Fire Emblem Awakening was released, I'm personally excited for the future of the Fire Emblem franchise. Now let's talk about consoles while we have a little bit of a chance here, shall we? One thing that's been an ongoing thing for years with me is whether or not Nintendo would continue to support the 3DS going into the next year. And every year, I've said Nintendo is going to hold out one more year. So is this the final year for the 3DS? Honestly, it may be. But my official prediction for the year will be that Nintendo will continue to release games for the 3DS through 2019. It may be 2020 is the final year, but we'll get to that when we get to next year predictions. There will be little skins and other smaller ports of older titles to maintain support for the console, and Nintendo could easily port these titles to the Switch afterwards, similar to Fire Emblem Warriors. And if the sequel is announced this year, they could do the very same thing with the 3DS and Switch again. They have the technology. One other big rumor is that the new Switch version will be coming out this year, either a new Pro version or something more along the lines of a portable exclusive model. If I were to make a guess, I would have to predict that Nintendo would release a deluxe Switch version similar to what they did with the Wii U. It won't have much more power, but maybe with some slight hardware revisions and an increased memory. Heck, if the Wii U could have four times the memory, why can't the Switch? Seriously though, I'm, I'm not a tech whiz. Is there a reason they couldn't do this? Someone please let me know. Now, the last few years, Nintendo has announced multiple Mario games per year. Whether they're ports, releases, or spin-offs, Nintendo always seems inclined to push the plumber to the moon. I don't see this year being any different, with Mario Bros. U Deluxe coming early in the year, and Luigi's Mansion 3 still yet to receive a release date. I can see Nintendo releasing another Mario Sports title on top of this, like Mario Golf Mid-Year, and following it up with Mario Maker as a big holiday title. Either that or some new expansions to Odyssey, similar to the expansion to Xenoblade Chronicles 2. While we're on the topic, let's talk about DLC, as Nintendo has stated they wanted to bring DLC to existing games that have already been released in the future. While they have continued to support things like Splatoon 2 and Mario Tennis Aces, some games have notable absences in the DLC department, like the aforementioned Mario Odyssey, whose datamined costumes have all been revealed, Super Mario Party has yet to receive any DLC. The cups haven't even changed once! Nintendo has to have something planned for more DLC for that game. I'm not really opposed to Nintendo to continue their DLC practices, as they really seem to be doing a great job with all their DLC. But please give us something new in Super Mario Party. New boards, maybe a few new games, but for the love of God, change the cup games. I've already gotten the top 100 in all three. Humble brag, please give us something new. Now speaking about DLC, I think the most anticipated DLC is obviously the Smash Fighters Pass. And although there have been some rumors about the second fighter, the final three fighters are relatively wide open despite rumors swirling all over the internet. So the question remains, who are those three fighters going to be? Well, one of the longtime speculated characters is someone I believe will be in the game and someone I have believed will be in the game for a long time, Steve from Minecraft. I know some people aren't exactly happy about that, but Minecraft is one of the most influential games of the last decade. And if console exclusive characters have earned a spot on this list, then a game that will always have fans also definitely deserves some representation. Plus, Steve being a playable character could push a younger player base towards Smash. Now, with there being a few third party characters, Nintendo would be foolish not to add a character of their own for promotional purposes. And honestly, with Nintendo's love of weapon wielders, I can see them adding in a character from Fire Emblem Three Houses. Yes, I know it's not the most exciting pick, but I feel it's a safe bet, especially if they finally include an axe wielder. Still better they didn't do that already. Now the final character I'm going to predict, and admittedly, I'm a little biased on my part, is the character I've most wanted in the game since 64, but for the love of god Nintendo, give us Banjo-Kazooie and Smash! With the rumored N64 Classic right around the corner, yes, I'm making the prediction that's probably coming out this year. I would have put that officially in the list, but it's rumored, so you can count that as a sort of mini prediction if you want. Nintendo would have had to cut a deal with Xbox and Microsoft to use some of their rare games on that console. 
Let's face it, as great as Nintendo's library is on the N64, it just wouldn't be the same without some of the rare classics on there, such as Banjo-Kazooie, Banjo-Tooie, Diddy Kong Racing, Perfect Dark. These are just some of the games that would be absolutely phenomenal to have on there, and I'm sure Nintendo did something to make this happen. Who knows where it'll go in the future, especially if they cut a deal with Steve, maybe they got a two-for-one deal. I'm personally excited for whoever Nintendo has planned, and hopefully I'll be happy with whatever they pick. Those are all my predictions for 2019. Leave a comment down below. Let me know which ones you think are going to happen, which ones aren't going to happen, which ones you think are going to happen that aren't on the list. Leave a comment down below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and leave a like if you feel so inclined. For everyone here at 24 Kevin Tendo, I'm your host, 24 Kevin. See y'all next time. Hope you have a great day. Happy New Year!